Hello there, mortals. I'm Rail, and this is how you should run gold in Dungeons & Dragons. Now, before we get into anything else, let me preface by saying that there's nothing wrong, per se, with simply using gold as it was written in the rulebooks. If you want to use gold as just another economic system, which happens to have spread across the land, and make the material itself be just another rare metal, that's perfectly fine. At the end of the day, these methods do work, as I think we all know, but any DM with players that like looking into things a bit more closely will have run into the same set of questions, the same set of difficulties. They range from questions based on magic to questions based on the universal nature of D&D's economy, and they'll each likely leave you stumped, because the truth is that the books simply don't give you an answer for it in most cases. This is, of course, variable. There's a gargantuan amount of official settings and a nigh unlimited amount of unlimited ones. I'm sure someone can think of some setting that actually addresses the issues I have, but the core rulebooks, and indeed every traditional instance of a D&D setting recently published, will just give you a set of vague directions and a shrug. And that is why I propose something different, and in my opinion, considerably better. A solution that'll make sense for your universe, for your players, and for you. Hopefully, that is. It's a solution that I found for my own campaign, and one I think fixed a lot of the issues to be found in how the base system handled gold, and indeed costs in general. So let's get into it. This is how you should run gold. First of all, I have to break down the issues that I mentioned earlier. So let's break down the gold situation in layman's terms to properly identify the issue. I'm fairly sure everyone who's played D&D, or indeed any D20 fantasy system, is familiar with the GP economic system. In many ways, the gold-silver-copper trio is as synonymous with Dungeons & Dragons as the class system is. A gold coin is worth 10 silver, a silver is worth 10 copper, and so on and so forth. It also helps that the idea of trading in gold isn't strange to us. Gold was, indeed, used as a currency in some periods of human history, including the medieval one, which inspired much of D&D. Alongside Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, making mention of a bag of gold every now and again. To quote the books themselves, common coins come in several different denominations, based on the relative worth of the metal from which they are made. The three most common coins are the gold piece, GP, the silver piece, SP, and the copper piece, CP. But while we all know that gold is valuable in real life due to its long-lasting nature, beautiful appearance, and considerable rarity, it's hard to ensure that the same phenomenon would repeat itself in the fantastical worlds Dungeons and Dragons prefers to portray. While we all know that it was commonly used as currency and coinage by many ancient civilizations, such as the Romans and even the Mycenaean Greeks, it was most certainly not uniformly used throughout the world like the gold coin system apparently is. There must be something special about the material, about gold itself. So, what are the characteristics of gold as a metal in normal Dungeons & Dragons? This may vary from world to world, but rules as written, gold itself doesn't have any unique characteristics to speak of. It's a metal from which weapons are usually never crafted from, without any openly discussed magical properties, and with a rarity comparable to that of its real-world counterpart, which is to say, it's pretty rare. The books even go so far as to say this. The gold piece is the standard unit of measure for wealth, even if the coin itself is not commonly used. When merchants discuss deals that involve goods or services worth hundreds or thousands of gold pieces, the transactions don't usually involve the exchange of individual coins. Rather, the gold piece is a standard measure of value. To reiterate, a standard measure of value. Across almost every given civilization, both within the material plane and sometimes outside of it, gold is treated as the universal currency, the one coin to rule them all. 
it's barely used in day-to-day -day life at least according to the books themselves one can live a decently comfortable life on a few silver a day they each use gold as the ruling stick though instead of the currency they most often use creatures far and wide deal in gold for goods despite their great distances from one another and despite likely never using gold coins themselves to trade with which leads me to ask the million gold question what is so universal about it the dmg would tell you that gold is universal because nobles far and wide regulate and agree on pricing for coins even then you'll only have a few lines to base it off of unlike the dynamics between races or societies setting books tend to avoid delving into economy all that much assuming that the aforementioned dynamics will be sufficient due to their basis on the real world but that doesn't hold up to scrutiny and i'll get to why instead here's my proposal gold has worth as a magical component an objective measure of value it's not exactly difficult to see why gold would be valuable much like gemstones it's a rare and beautiful material from which things like jewelry can be crafted in gold's case its rarity is directly responsible for its market value or so it would appear were that the case though would gold and the coins associated with it really be that universal as the currency it doesn't take a genius to conclude that no it most likely wouldn't and all it takes for someone to start questioning the hows and whys of this economic system is a world map and a few roads to stare at consider this if your Dungeons & Dragons world is globally scaled, it's extremely likely that you have many examples of civilizations that are relatively isolated or located in areas inhospitable to some. Underground cities, for example, might live in considerable isolation from the rest of the world. Likewise, settlements in mountains and similar areas might have a hard time establishing trade with other kingdoms. Yet, if Dungeons & Dragons is to be believed, these two will share a single economic value, not just with one another, but with the entire rest of civilization. Even in the eras where gold was most common in the real world, currencies weren't internationally recognized like the GP system is. But GP is. Furthermore, Wizards of the Coast went out of their way to emphasize that a gold coin isn't, indeed, the baseline value that's used by most, stating that a peasant is most likely paid and paying in silver, not gold, and in fact probably assumes that using gold for exchanges is superfluous. Unless you're rich, both gold and platinum pieces are representative of a larger amount of wealth than you usually deal with, or indeed even need to deal with. Using gold as a template value, to them, is somewhat equivalent to what it would be like if the entirety of society used $100 bills as the baseline value, instead of the $1 or $10 bills. Particularly poor people are unlikely to even manage it. Those well-off may very well manage it with some frequency, but they won't go out and use it for everything. Yet, all these people measure in gold. Why? well there are a few possible reasons first the obvious one it would be a pain for a dm to come up with multiple currencies conversion rates inflations and etc the universal nature of D D's economy could very well be a concession made for ease of gameplay and the use of the gold coin as a baseline value could be something to facilitate real life measures of value that's understandable of course and this is all well and good but doesn't do much for the characters and the world itself. At the end of the day, balancing the gameplay mechanics and the immersion of a system is one of the most important things a tabletop system can strive for. For its part, at least regarding gold, Dungeons & Dragons chose to mostly disregard the latter in favor of the former. But there is a second, relatively more obscure reason, one that the books support but don't openly argue for, and that I am proposing we explore and elaborate upon. Spellcasting. Let's take a look at the spellcasting section of the player's handbook. Just a quick peek, really. Notice anything? The keen amongst you should have picked up on what I mean. A lot of spells measure their material's worth in gold. Dig a little further into the rules, and you'll find something else of note, still within the PHB. The rules for a spellcasting focus state that the focus can be used to replace any material components a given spell needs, unless they have their worth in gold explicitly stated. In that case, you must supply 
by the material yourself. This gives us an interesting insight into the way gold could function. Not even a spell focus or component pouch can replace items which have a gold cost, which is, at least apparently, measured objectively. Some spells even consume and require gold itself as a component, Clearly, the value of a given object, within the rules of Dungeons & Dragons, is both objective, measurable, and important. This can even lead to some unique interactions should you choose to be stern with interpreting the rules as they are spoken. Rules as written, any given spell with such a valued material component simply won't work if you make the decision to cheap out and buy a component of lower quality, even if their volume is the same. A diamond worth 430 gold, for example, would not qualify if the spell asked for one worth 450, even if the difference in price comes down to manufacturing or a jeweler's touch or lack thereof. This is especially true for the wizard and for those possessing the ability to cast rituals. The very act of copying and learning a spell, or of fabricating and creating a spell scroll, requires materials valued in gold. Once again, we see that the value of gold is established in an almost objective fashion. Rather, it's almost as if the expending of something valuable is fundamental to the practice of spellcasting as a whole. Not just because spellcasting requires components that happen to be valuable, but because it requires components precisely because they are valuable. It's not as far-fetched as it could be to assume gold has a special property in and of itself, then, that allows for this. So at least to casters, gold could be more than simply a measure of coinage or a part of a nation's economic system. It's now something that makes magic work meaning it is now a system by which the objective value of everything can be measured. Not exactly outlandish, considering we're dealing with a high magic system here. Gold isn't just a pretty metal which happens to be rare, and which we use to represent value and worth. It's an active magical element, useful to perform all sorts of miracles across the globe, and which exists in a limited quantity. To put it in simpler terms, gold is a measure of worth everyone has access to and everyone has use for. Even a non-caster can and will see the value in possessing it, because gold will interest a spellcaster, and they will likely trade for it. And why wouldn't they? A caster will need gold to cast, either to trade for materials in exact values, or to consume the gold itself. They will need gold, because that gold is what allows them to know what anything is worth, and they need to know that to cast many of their spells. Now, this single supposition alone allows for some leeway in letting the GP system remain universal. If a gold coin is a given amount of gold in the shape of a coin, then we have both people who know exactly what this gold is worth and who are willing to trade for it. And if the gold coin is universal, and it would be considerably more so than even in real life due to its place in facilitating the spellcasting process, then it becomes increasingly easy to justify the universality of the rest of the GP system, which could simply exist to support and spread the use of the gold coin as the true core and baseline value within the system. In the real world, money has no objective value. We've long since passed the times when money supposedly represented a given quantity of gold held by the state. Money nowadays is merely worth its trading power, and thus the baselines established are artificial, and there's no real point in using anything but those baselines, which are usually meant to be practical for daily usage. In Dungeons & Dragons, that is not the case. The gold coin, which isn't commonly used for daily life, is treated as the measuring stick. This only makes sense if we make a concession that gold has a value of its own, objective enough to support an entire system based on representing parts of its value. And, with the way spellcasting works, as per the rules of Dungeons & Dragons, that's not too outlandish a conclusion. Now comes the fun part. This is how I use gold. Let's take this a step further. All we need to do to really establish gold as the one and only, the one coin to rule them all, is change one type of item, the spell focus. 
suppose we assume that much like for casting certain spells gold is a measure and a material necessitated by the act of creating a spell or performing a magical effect we've already established that gold is something magic seems to use as a ruler for value but let us change a single piece of the rules for them let's say a spell focus is still unable to allow someone to cast a spell without a component which has its cost in gold specified however now the spell focus can allow someone to pay that value in gold instead of having the materials at hand balance wise the pricing is the same all this one change would accomplish is make it slightly less inconvenient to cast certain spells the payoff is this gold has now cemented itself as an absolutely invaluable asset to any and all casters suddenly gold is even more than just an objective measure of worth it's miracle spell casting casters of all nationalities and indeed even those of other planes would now have a reason to desire gold gold is what allows them to cast many of their spells and indeed makes many magical effects possible this also means that the nation and the individual who possesses gold gains a lot of trading power at least in regards to casters and a considerable amount of objective power a nation's wealth can now also be fueled into actual might by means of magical spells this of course further emphasizes the trading value of gold to nobles and to casters and that will extend to any and everyone who may not have a use for gold themselves too for a material that allows for this sort of trading power would quickly gain traction at some point it becomes a fact that there is very little reason not to establish gold as a universal currency because if we establish that it has an objective value to spell casting it already would be everyone would use gold to measure the worth of everything else not just because they do so in the books but because it makes sense to and this unlike any normal economic system can very reasonably be said to be used uniformly or at least almost so across the land or even beyond it unlike what the books would have you believe it would be very difficult to change the value of a gold coin and almost impossible to stop people from trading with and for it seeing as at least the casters of every nationality will need it at some point now compare this to the lack of information given to us by the rule books themselves gold is used almost universally because it is because rare metals are as a rule of thumb valuable and because they provide different cultures with trading power because it spread and remain consistent despite some civilizations living in nigh inconsiderable situations small villages in the middle of nowhere will trade in gold despite their very limited access to the outside world and they do so because nobles agree to set the prices for gold across the land gold could possess with evidence in the rules themselves a wide extent of objective and interesting uses in magic and society with but a few hours spent thinking about it and maybe a slight nudge to the rules here and there we make the gold system mean something this all was drawn from evidence and logic but all we're told is that its value is purely arbitrary like that of any other coin despite magic itself measuring a value in it because some nobles said so and that's why you've been using gold wrong 